untie a stimulator. Start my thread back at about the one third position. I'll just get it started right there. First thing I'm going to catch in is my wire. I'll catch it in on the b belly if I can. And pull it through. Uh, hook size I'm tying on here is a 12, but uh, the process is the same. I see a lot of people strugg struggle with stimulators. So I've got my tail here. It's just a well care. And uh, I think one of the things that people struggle with the most is overdoing the material. So you can kind of see compared to the hook gap. It's uh, when it's compressed uh, slightly, it's about the hook gap. So when you tie in the tail, what you're looking to do is you want about the hook gap distance for the tail. Sorry, I'm blocking that light. And I'll set that just above the barb. I'm going to place a couple of loose wraps over and pull up. And a friend asked me to tie these. Um, said he was struggling with them. Now we can just kind of jump the thread back. We don't have to spend a lot of time making this part super nice. But the tail is typically pretty short. You can make it longer if you want. And place a couple of wraps through that tail. And on the third time over, I'm going to pull down while I'm pinching just to get it to flare open. Like so. And now we've got our tail and our wire all in place at one time. Just check everything here to make sure that tail's sitting correctly. And the one thing I'll do is I'll add some super glue just in to the tip of the tail and across the back. Uh, next, a secret weapon for these um, that I don't think a lot of people think about. They, they move to dubbing very quickly and that's cool. You can use dubbing. I'm going to use dubbing. Um, but you can use a host of material. Uh, but what I've got here is Angora Goat. Uh, this is one of the original materials um, that was used for stimulators, or goat in general. Now, a lot of people wax this, and you can. Uh, it'll actually help you in a lot of aspects of tying with it because it's not the friendliest of dubbings. But... Um, I'll come through in a minute and clean it up. So, I just have to get it to where I can get my, get it started, get my fingers on top to twist together and lay it down. And you can see it covers up. Very little covers up that orange thread real nice. So you don't have to get super crazy with the amount of dubbing that you need or anything like that. And it does like to flare and bend and move and kind of go all over the place. That's why it's a great alternative for a um, seal dub. And we'll bring it right on up front. We got a little too much there. Okay. And next, I want to just lift this top few fibers, place a wrap under, grab the next few, wrap, so on and so forth, bringing them all on top as I do this to make a cut. 
and we're kind of building a little dam here, as it were. Right up, right up front. Just like so. And we still have this whole front part exposed. Sorry, it's a June bug that's lost. If you can hear that in the background. Next, I'm going to kind of cut this at an angle, kind of like you would a uh, elk hair or caddis head. I'm just going to start wrapping through it, winding it down, tightening it up. For a lot of dry flies, I typically use uh, GSP. Uh, it doesn't work very well uh, on this particular pattern. A lot of patterns it works fantastic on, but uh, I think you really need the uh, thread base um, and the uni thread with the since it's woven, uh, it kind of provides a little bit better foundation. You always want to build on a good foundation, unless you're building midges and you're just like, hey, I'm gonna tie this bug real fast. So I'm just coming through and kind of cleaning it up. Okay. All right, let's get this back to where you guys can see it well. And we're going to kind of just gently start the slope process. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to use here is a uh, um, blonde or golden badger. And separate these fibers out because I want to get down to some of the smaller stuff. And I want to tie this in in a figure eight stand up dry fly orientation. So my stem's going to come down. Place two wraps over, sneak around the back side. Two wraps that way. Now I can catch my stem in coming forward. And just trim that out. Start working that forward just a little bit, just to try to keep that slope even, somewhat even. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. Next, we're gonna wrap this back. Let's see if I can reseat that a little bit. And it's a, you know, it's really up to the tire here uh, on how close you want your wrap. Some people have them really close. I'm gonna go pretty close here myself. But you wanna try to keep it even. Work that hackle forward if you need to so you can see the blonde stem uh, even though it's a badger, it just kind of blends in a little bit to the uh, dubbing, makes it a little, a little bit more difficult to see. All right, I'm going to take my wire and wrap in the same direction that I was wrapping my hackle. If you've never tied one of these or an elk or caddis, it sounds counterintuitive, but actually it allows you to bring your wire forward. At about a 45 degree angle going forward and not trap too many of the barbs. And we'll tie this wire off coming forward. I'm going to keep some pressure on that wire when I helicopter this off. Very good. Switch hands. Pressure, pull it forward. And you kind of tease everything and groom everything. If you got some stuff that's sticking out that you don't like, now's a good time to get rid of it. No, you're not doing it in the middle of when everything's on. Okay. 
<clears throat> that's a huge chunk of it. Next, what I'm going to get is uh, for this particular color of stimulator, I've got just one uh, fluorescent hot orange piece of crystal flash. Um, and it's a full length piece. So I want, what I like to do is like to cut this in half. So I'll fold it over in half, create a loop. Uh, the loop will be one half of that uh, will be about eight inches. And then I'll fold this over a few more times, doubling it up. Uh, some people like to have like just a ton of flash back there. I like some. Okay. I'm just going to slide that up underneath the thread, right on top of the hook shank. Place a few wraps, fold the other half to the back. And then I can kind of check it to see where it is. That's pretty good. And now I'm going to cut that out about halfway into the tail. About like that. <clears throat> what I like to do here is take some super glue. Oh, got the hair sticking out there. Take some super glue and just brush lightly onto my front end area including the crystal flash and kind of get it into place. Push it down a little bit. Make sure it's situated in the orientation that I want. Okay. Uh, next, we're going to take another uh, blonde hackle. You could use grizzly here. You could use black. I mean, it's really up to the tire here. But I'm gonna kind of draw all this out and see where everything wants to sit. Now we are gonna have a little bit of a foundation in there with some peacock, but I'm just gonna get this prepped right now. So either get it prepped now or after the wing. Okay. And next, so now I've got that prep work done. Now I want to come in and get my wing. And this is where I think a lot of people um, go wrong a little bit. And so I've clipped out just off the hide of the elk hair without combing it out about a full distance without twisting it together. I, I normally I'll twist these together uh, to get a good gauge, but uh, this is a little bit past the um, hook point. But that leaves me a little bit of room to clean this out. Now that I've cleaned it out, and I bring it back. Now it's actually, let me see that, it's right about the gap. And so the tail and the gap, uh, or I'm sorry, the tail and the wing should be both about the gap width. And I think we're a lot of people go astray is by putting too much on and then what happens is is you have this like massive body and this like super fat head it's orientated in the right direction and so you want this wing traditionally to come out either some, you'll see some people do it in line I think that looks a little squirrely uh, I think it looks a little bit better if you half the distance of this tail and put a few turns in just get this all back on top lift up my second turn lift up 
And I'm going to start wrapping through and break your thread off. That's always awesome. Started wrapping through too hard, I guess. That's all right. We can fix this. No problem. And I'll just put a little glue in there. We'll come back for that tag in a second. And just keep lifting up and working forward. So we're sitting something about like this. And you can work back, especially if you snap your thread like I just did. Work your, work your way back. All right, we'll separate the two portions here. Okay, now we can come in, trim all that off real close. Now you can tie these with a ton of materials, uh, do it in a ton of colors. Um, you don't, you know, there's a lot of people that don't actually tie these necessarily the way that I'm tying it now, although the way I'm tying it now uh, came out of random, uh, Randall Kaufman's book. He's the guy that invented this thing, so um, I'm not saying other people are wrong, but I'll stick with the I'll stick with the inventor on this one, just because of the complexity and how much materials involved. Uh, be interested to ask him how long it took him to put this one together. Okay, so now we have our wing. All right. Cool. Next, I'm going to grab the hackle that I just prepped. I'm going to line it up coming forward. And I want my barbs to kind of meet up with these old barbs here. So you may have to work your thread back a little bit onto your uh, uh, wing to get that to line up correctly. And I'll trim this stem out, it's a little too far. And if you got all this craziness with the deer hair, don't worry about it. Not yet. Okay. Next for the thorax, I'm just gonna take uh, two pieces of peacock curl. And I'm going to clip them, line them up on the side. Now you can core twist this if you want. I'm a, I'm a big fan of core twisting. we got a video on it, uh, and I do it in a lot of other flies. Uh, it's not really necessary on this particular pattern. Um, uh, you could also add dubbing here if you wanted to. And I, uh, you know, I'll probably do a few more videos on uh, different stimulators, um, just because there's a wide variety of them with different materials. Um, I'm sure I'll get asked about it, and so maybe just do three or four more, just to show you some different materials that you can use and how they're applied. So now we're just going to wrap this guy forward. We are going to twist it together. Right over all those little hairs that were sticking up.
tie that off well. I'm just going to turn this so I can get to it easily. Trim that out. Okay. On the home stretch. Alright. Grab my hackle plier here. And so the idea here when you're deciding your hackle is that it either lines up or is slightly bigger than the back. Um, it can take some practice to kind of work through that and figure it out. And uh, the $10 million question is do we leave a gap in between the front? so that the uh, peacock curl or dubbing or whatever you are using uh, shows through and the honest answer is there's no correct answer there um, even in uh, Randall's book he shows it both ways so um, yeah I mean it's uh, tires choice on that one which kind of makes this a fun pattern all right, I'm just going to tie this off. Okay. Get my cuticle clippers. And that's looking pretty good. I'm going to wet whip this just to make it easy on myself. And I've got a piece of wire standing by to clean out the eye. It's always good to have a piece of wire or something standing by to clean out your eye if you're going to wet whip. Uh-oh. It locked up on me. A little sugar magnolia. <laughs> it locked up on me. That glue drew, uh, drew. The glue dried faster than I anticipated, I guess. Let's put a little on top. It'll be good. Fly is saved, I promise. That's one of the reasons why I wet whip so much. It'll save your behind. Um, yeah, so use that trick sometime. If you liked the video, uh, always appreciate a thumbs up, like, subscribe, and share. I'm going to glue the bottom of this thing shut here. Um, appreciate you hanging around. And if, uh, you, if you've got something that you're interested in tying and want to see it tied, uh, let me know. You can message me. Um, on off this video or uh, you can find me on Facebook over at Fly Tying for Beginners and um, hey I show the mishaps because that's what happens is uh, mishaps and so hopefully I can make the mistakes before you and uh, you can correct yourself off of that just like that one uh, other than that uh, as always everybody happy tying take care thanks for watching We'll see you next time.